people across the United States are exhausted and burnt out right now are not doing well. Large corporations are trying to bring people back to the office. There's so much uncertainty in the economy and what's happening politically around the globe. There's a lot of fear and there's also a lot of news about children not being okay, teens being really depressed and anxious and very stressed and unfortunately really, really sad statistics, even with teenage and college depression and suicide. Now, of course, it is not corporations' sole responsibility to have people be well and be happy, but they do have partial responsibility. So human well-being is created by the government, also corporations and organizations that people work for, as well as the individual. It's societal work and then you, all right? And so organizations do play a part and there are countries and societies that are doing a lot better than the United States right now. Now, of course, there are some big companies that are doing really, really well, and there are others that are missing the mark. The good news is that the science of happiness and organizational psychology, as well as neuroscience research, and the research coming from companies that have really, really happy employees with high levels of well being, there's so much incredible research that will guide C suite executives on what to do and how to raise well being. So we know what the government can do to raise gross national happiness, okay? But let's talk about what big companies, what giant organizations can do to support well being. And there's incredible research that, have, that has come out from Deloitte and Oxford University and others that share and communicate the state of well being in the United States as well as countries like Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom, et cetera. So again, the research is there on how people are doing and what organizations and executives can do to increase well-being. So if you if we look at right now, what are the big companies doing well in terms of well-being? So for one, they're giving people way more flexibility, way more flexibility with how to work, where to work, when to work, and that flexibility and autonomy is increasing people's well being. Also, big companies are supporting people's physical well being with the benefits and the programs that they offer. Whether this be discount to a local gym, offering meditation apps, having people do yoga, et cetera, these, these organizations are focusing on how do we help people be physically healthier? And there's been a lot of progress in, let's think about just the umbrella of wellness, okay? Companies are doing well. And they're doing well offering well-being benefits. Now, are people using them? That's another question. But big companies are offering them, okay? Some leaders in big companies are modeling healthy behavior. Not all, but some. And that's improving and it needs to continue to improve. And also, large organizations are just taking the concept of human well-being more seriously. And when people are well, when people are happy at work, they are more creative, more productive, more loyal, they will have happier customers, and there will be less sick days, you will be able to attract top talent, and business will grow. There are so many benefits for big companies to focus on well-being. Now, let's talk about where large organizations are missing the mark when it comes to human happiness and human well-being. And when I go through this pretty big list of where big companies are missing the mark, you can look at it in a negative way, but you could also think about it as this, these are the opportunities. These are the opportunities for companies to invest in, train their leaders on, and increase human well-being so that the employees are doing better and the company will grow and be more profitable. And again, companies that have high levels of well being grow faster. Money follows happiness, money follows well being. So here's the list 
First is, according to the Deloitte's recent well-being report, C-suite executives do not realize how poorly their employees are doing. There is a major disconnect. And this is the second annual report. And C-suite executives think that they have really moved the needle on well-being over the past 12 months. And the research shows no. Employees are either doing the exact same last year as they were last year or they're doing worse and they are talking about their mental health their physical health their emotional health okay also companies are not regularly measuring well-being most big companies do an annual survey an annual engagement survey throw it out the window it (laughs) you need to be measuring well-being monthly or quarterly and it doesn't need to be this huge a massive time sucking project. Measure well being, and you can use the Oxford survey, which has four simple questions, and ask how happy and well people are doing. So, regular measurement is not happening in big companies. Also, workload. People are drowning in the amount of work, and that is severely affecting their happiness and their well being. Also, people are expected to be always on with technology and tools like Slack, etc. So if you always have to be connected to work, your happiness and well-being is going to be less. Big companies are still missing the mark in terms of maternity leave and paternity leave. There is no reason why the United States has people going back to work at 10 weeks or 12 weeks. And there's no reason why fathers shouldn't be spending time with their kids, with these newborn little babies. So huge opportunity there. Also meetings culture. People are spending way too much time in meetings and that is making them be chronically stressed. People are exhausted, they're chronically stressed, they're overwhelmed and there's high levels of depression and anxiety. The work hours are too long. If you are working all the time, your well-being is going to suffer. And if your well-being suffers, you're not going to do your best work and there's the ripple effect, okay? People are struggling to take time off because of their workload and because of the work expectations. Big companies are not making sure that people have enough time to get enough sleep, exercise, and take breaks. And a massive part of this is social connection and human connection. The US Surgeon General has just come out with the epidemic of loneliness in the United States. People are disconnected and loneliness is worse for you than smoking, okay? Could go on and on about loneliness, but people need time with their family and with their friends. Big companies need to support families. They need to make sure that people are spending time with their spouse, with their parents, with their siblings, and with their children, and then friendships, okay? Mid-level managers need more empowerment to be able to take care of their team's well-being. There are a lot of big corporate policies and then the mid-level managers are not empowered is what the research shows. Leaders need more training on how to support well-being, social well-being, physical well-being, mental health, emotional well-being, etc. And big companies need to invest more in professional development at all levels of their organization. There's such a huge focus on driving business results such a huge focus on driving revenue and profit. Of course, you're a for-profit company, yes. And there needs to be an equal focus on people. In order to drive results, people need to be well. And last but not least is big companies and executives need to help employees belong, be included, feel connected to each other. Again, the number one driver of human well being is human connection. And so companies need to create environments where everyone belongs. No matter who you are, where you're from, everyone belongs and everyone feels connected to each other. Hope this information is helpful to you and inspires you to take well being action seriously and immediately.